This week in Nerf, we've got a new Star Wars blaster, new third-party products, and project delays. I'm Jangular, and every Saturday morning, this is your source for first-party, third-party, and community Nerf news. It is absolutely wonderful to be back in front of the wall. We are home from End War. It was an amazing time. Uh, there are videos coming talking about that. But let's get into the news for today. Let's go ahead and start off with the Star Wars blaster mentioned in the intro. This is the Beckett blaster from uh, Solo, rather, the uh, newest Star Wars movie. This is very similar to the Han blaster that we've seen in the past because if you've seen the movie you would understand why. But this one does have a stock and barrel attachment which is nice. It's definitely interesting and it looks like a uh, different potentially attachment point for the, for the barrel because of the way the protrusion is for the front of the blaster normally. Uh, so we'll have to get a look at that closer once we do see that. But this was posted in a uh, Facebook group and then shared through their two Nerf modders welcome by Raphael Wong. And that is something interesting. We, we didn't really hear about this or know that it was coming, at least to my understanding. So getting to see this all of a sudden is definitely something interesting. And, uh, well, I think it's nice for the cosplayers or the collectors, the, the Star Wars fans. Obviously, we know that the performance of this is not going to be substantial or fantastic in any real meaningful way, but we do know that it's cool looking and it's something from the newest movie and uh, it shows that they are continuing to use that license that they have gotten for the Star Wars stuff and occasionally we do see the really cool stuff from them, so... I'm glad we're seeing more blasters for the Star Wars theme. Uh, hopefully we get more good blasters for the hobby side of things as we continue to see more and more from them. But let's go ahead and move on to something that was posted up on Reddit. And this was posted by Reddit user Kriyaka. This is a minimized rapid strike auto pusher and this is awesome. This is a super cool resource that Kuriaka has been working on. Uh, this is something that you can print from Thingiverse. It is open source, available to everyone, and it will allow you to have a yoke style pusher in your blaster without gutting a rapid strike for that pusher mech. Now, we've seen a lot of auto pusher kits that use a different style, uh, the gear style that we see from you know a lot of the light take kits and things like that, but this is that uh, traditional rapid strike pusher mech that I personally really like so I'm glad to see a open source option that people can just download and use and print on their own so this is super cool to me and I love when people make these open source style products that people can just use and help for the community to help people's projects and things like that so this is something super cool that you should definitely keep your eye on I believe he's still uh, hammering out some of the little details and and uh, making it better and better. So definitely keep your eye on that. I will have links down below to both the, uh, the Reddit post and the Thingiverse listing for it because this is just a cool resource and you know I love sharing those for the community. Now we've got something from Open Flywheel Project and this is a post announcing the release, release of the Eclipse Gen 2 cages. Now, a lot of you know the, the Eclipse Gen 1 cages had some issues, the wheels had issues, there were some things that needed to be fixed, and um, they've gone back to the drawing board, and they've actually worked through, I believe, four uh, iterations of this cage and flywheels, and uh, they are now ready to release the second version, the Gen 2, uh, with new geometries that should be easier on darts, leading to less... Uh, decapitations or messed up foam, things like that, issues that we saw with the first generation. So fingers crossed that is the case. Uh, the projected FPS is 170 to 190 depending on dart choice. There are some suggested darts that you use with the system, so it's not a freewheeling system where you can throw in anything you want, but there are some darts that will perform better than others, so keep that in mind. The price currently is $70 US plus shipping. Shipping in the US, I believe, is only like four bucks, but if you are international, it will cost you a bit more. Uh, Actually, I do have a poll up right now on Patreon, so if you are a patron and you have not voted in that poll, I actually am looking for your thoughts on whether or not I should pick one of these up for review, because it is interesting and I do want to be able to share that, but if you have not voted yet and you are a patron, definitely go do that, because it is very close, so 
I uh, wanted to get that out there. But it's definitely good to see that they have been able to work through their issues and uh, test things out. They've been testing these cages apparently uh, in the New York area at their games for a little while now. So fingers crossed for good results from that. I'll definitely be uh, looking forward to it. But let's go ahead and move on to uh, something else. Let's talk about Jet Blasters. Now with the Cetus shipping, it's time to move on to the Omega. Actually, real quick, they did release in this video that will be down, down, uh, linked down below that... Uh, Psych speculation uh, seems to have been the case for the delays in shipping. So the CETA are now shipping and the halt has been lifted. So uh, fingers crossed you should all be getting your CETAs soon that ordered them. But the Omega kit has been pushed back to July, the end of July I believe it was. Uh, they encountered some issues with the metal on metal contact of the catch in the back of the blaster and they are going to switch to making it Delrin. Uh, which should lead to better results and a better feeling trigger pull, according to them. Now, this is something that some people speculated on beforehand and uh, thought may be an issue. So some people I can see being a little disgruntled that they didn't catch it right away. Personally, I'm glad that they were able to acknowledge it and understand that it was going to be a problem and move to fix it. Yes, it's definitely a bummer. We're going to have to wait another month for these at, at the least. But uh, at least they are addressing the problem before it does get into the hands of end users. In that time, they have uh, made an option available for those of you that may have not wanted rose gold or, uh, or the standard color. They have offered uh, two new colors now, red and silver. So you can definitely check those out if you want something a little bit different. Uh, I don't know if the silver is going to be anodized like the rest of them. So if you're worried about... Uh, the anodized finish, maybe look into that. I don't know if that's going to be the raw material or not. I'm actually, I need to reach out to Jet to find out about that. So if I do, I will certainly let you know. But that's that's uh, unfortunate news for Jet because they do have the history of pushing things back. But at least they are communicating about it this time and letting us know, which is to me a plus, but it still means... A delay so there's pluses and minuses here i certainly hope they don't have to delay it again but with that said let's move on to our mod of the week this week it comes to us from adrian ward who we have featured before for its fantastic work this time it is an optimus magfed vulcan arm cannon this thing is a beautiful beautiful piece of work that is super cool i mean who hasn't wanted an arm mounted blaster before come on it is absolutely an awesome idea, and he's actually taken the uh, Rapid Strike pusher system and used that inside the Vulcan, changing it up from the belt fed to mag fed, which is always, always a good choice in my opinion. It makes things far easier to work with, but it just looks awesome. And something that I love is within the whole grip system inside of it, he has actually added the mag release. So you can, you can activate the mag release from inside the, the grip of the blaster, which is a super cool choice. Absolutely love this thing. Uh, it's really, really creative, really interesting, and just really cool looking. And who wouldn't want to have two of those? Oh my god, can you imagine two of them? That would be so much fun. Okay. Uh, that link is going to be down below, of course, and I've actually also included a link to their group page where there are other people that he is in a uh, modding group with where they will post their stuff. So if you want to follow along with them, definitely go check that out down below. That's going to bring us to our video of the week, and this week, there was a lot to choose from. There's a lot of end war related stuff to choose from. Unsurprisingly, going to be honest, next few weeks, probably end war related stuff because there's so much cool stuff coming out. But we decided to go with someone we have not featured on the channel before, and that is Detroit Dart Club. This is their end war 2018 highlights. And uh, I've been watching Detroit Dart Club stuff for a little while now, and I love his footage style. Uh, he gets some really good quality footage, some really good B-roll, some really good... Uh, interesting visuals so definitely this is something cool that he filmed throughout the entire weekend while giving his insight and his experiences and discussing and or as a whole uh, through his eyes which was really enjoyable and entertaining for me I thoroughly uh, enjoy getting to see good 
solid quality footage of events. So he got FoamCon, he got uh, Endor proper as well. So definitely go check that out. Before we get to that though, we are gonna say, uh, if you do have a video of the week or a mod of the week or anything like that that you would like to see on the show or you think should be on the show, maybe something I missed, always, always feel free to leave those down below. I love, love hearing from all of you. It is absolutely great and I love hearing your thoughts on all these things as well. So if you are new to the channel and you enjoyed this video, feel free to hit that subscribe button for in the future. And if you want to check out the Detroit Dark Club video, it's going to be right over here. So as always, thank you so much for watching. I'm glad to be back. I'm Jangular, and I'll see you next time.